Well, all week long, we've been talking with several teenage boys caught up in a life of crime at an early age. WMAR 2 News Mark Roper talked with some of those young men who shared their struggles with us trying to overcome their past. So, Mark, did you speak with any young women who had similar experiences with the juvenile justice system as well? Christian, we did. We met a young woman whose personality doesn't match what you would expect from someone who's had several run-ins with the law. And since she's been able to put her past behind her, we're protecting her identity, not showing her face or using her real name as she opens up about her life. A sporty ponytail and bright pink nails hint at this young woman's bubbly personality. But besides her hidden face, there's also another side to her you can't see. I was like 14 maybe. I did a hit and run with a car. Um, I was fighting. I was a lot. <laughs> Yeah. This was a pattern of behavior which eventually caused Vanessa to be incarcerated at a state secure facility for girls. I was more like on probation and mostly probation and like I did community service and um, I did girls groups. I mean, I've done it all. Vanessa believes a traumatic event in her childhood is the root of her problems. My dad got deported when I was like in elementary school, so I that took a big impact in my life because my dad was like my favorite person. Having lost touch with her dad, she found trouble on the streets. I guess you can say I was trying to get my mom's attention because she was always working all the time, and I just felt like she wasn't there. So I just started to go around and just find anything I can do to get my mind off my dad. Now 21 years old, she was in and out of the juvenile justice system. When I first came home, I was scared. I was frightened. I was, I was, I felt like I wasn't ready to come out. I actually told one of my, you know, supervisors, I was like, I don't want to come home. Like, I want to stay. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I wanted to stay. Fear of an uncertain future was another reason she wasn't so anxious to leave. I wanted to get my high school diploma because I knew myself. I knew that I wasn't going to come out and go back to school. Like, I just felt like I wasn't. All the promises that I made to myself, I knew I wasn't going to do it when I came home. And now that she's back home? I want girls and boys, I guess, to know that we can change. And don't let anyone tell you you can't do it just because you've been in the juvenile system. I've came so far, and I look at life so differently now. If you could go back in time and, and do things differently, what would you change? Do you want me to be honest with you? I wouldn't change one thing. Nope. Because I learned from my lesson. I learned a lot, and I wouldn't go back. And Vanessa told us how much her experience has inspired her. She now has a job, and she wants to go to college to study criminal justice. Her goal is to get a job with a juvenile facility so she can help kids learn from her mistakes. That's incredible, and she has the inside information about what it's like for those kids going through that. So, I mean, we wish her the best of luck, but it's just, as you said in the introduction, it just doesn't, she doesn't sound like someone who you'd expect to have gone through that. It is unbelievable when you meet her, you hear her voice. She's right. sort of soft spoken. She's very a, a girly girl. It's hard to believe uh, what some kids go through, but it's also great to see, very inspiring to see how these kids were able to turn their lives around. Check out all those stories on the website right now, WMAR2news.com. Mark, great, uh, great job Thank with you. that series. Yeah, thanks for having that.